Hello We Below Scouts, my name's Carl and I'm going to be your host for this particular uh, We Below's required adventure called Cast Iron Chef. Uh, we've got a pretty exciting video I think, pretty interesting one for you as we look at several of the requirements uh, that are presented in your We Below's handbook for Cast Iron Chef. Uh, the first requirement there is to plan a menu for a balanced meal for your dinner family and uh, you're going to join a discussion of uh, some scout leaders uh, who were involved with helping to, to put on this video and you'll see some of the uh, discussion that took place uh, in regarding deciding what that menu for that meal was going to be and uh, a discussion of the budget associated with that. Uh, the second requirement uh, for this activity uh, is to prepare a balanced meal for your dinner family and we're going to show you the preparation of that meal uh, that we uh, decided on, that balanced meal, and you'll see several different ways of preparing food uh, that we used uh, to illustrate the different methods uh, that are referred to in this requirement uh, for Cast Iron Chef. Uh, the third requirement for Cast Iron Chef uh, is to use tinder, kindling, and fuel uh, to build a campfire. And with the help of Ranger John from one of our camps, uh, he's going to show us how to build a campfire uh, that you can have an, uh, as a cooking fire or simply as a campfire uh, to help uh, uh, enjoy the fellowship uh, during a camp out. So stay tuned. Uh, that's coming up right now. All right. Well, Alvin Bridget, I'm glad that you're going to be going with us. Uh, here in a couple of weeks up to uh, one of our camps where we'll be working on uh, the Weebelows Adventure Cast Iron Chef. Um, pretty important one for the Weebelows because I know they like to eat uh, and I know Alvin you like to cook for your for a group so uh, uh, one of the things that uh, we're supposed to do before we uh, as part of this requirement is to look at what a balanced meal is and uh, we can demonstrate several different ways of preparing a meal as well. So uh, uh, what do you think we might uh, do? We, we can't do the entire you know, range of meals, a breakfast, lunch, and a dinner, but what if we uh, focused on recording our dinner prep Saturday evening and uh, show what a balanced uh, <coughs> meal might be uh, that could be done on a camp out. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Yes. Okay. Uh, so what do you think uh, we might cook as, uh, say, our main meal that evening? Well, Bridget, I think since we're talking about the Weeblos, we need to cook something that they would be interested in eating. So what do you think the Weeblos would like? Well, I know a lot of kids love to eat chicken. I do too. So I think chicken would be a good idea. Well, are we going to look at doing like a whole chicken or chicken breasts or uh, thighs and wings or what? I have some chicken thighs I could bring. Okay. Uh, what do you think would be a good way that we could cook them? Well, one of my favorite ways is grilling. Well, that would be healthy. So um, do some chicken thighs on the grill? Sure. All right. Well, that's uh, part of requirement two is to, to show how to use several different means of cooking uh, uh, for a meal and uh, cooking on a camp stove uh, with a grill top, a griddle top, uh, would, would be certainly be one way of doing that. So if we're going to have chicken, what would we want to have with the chicken uh, so that we're demonstrating a balanced meal? What about some uh, fresh mixed veggies? That sounds good. Just go ahead and put them on the grill with it. Sounds good to me, and it gives the kids a choice to pick which ones they like, or they can just have them all. There you go. Okay. That's always a good idea, because, you know, some people 
uh, like some vegetables better than others and and so if we've got a mix of vegetables we certainly should find something there uh, that the scouts would like to eat yeah well that's one method and stuff um, Carl you think we should demonstrate another method uh, I think we should try to do something else uh, especially using a Dutch oven oh I love cooking in the Dutch ovens and I know you too also, Bruce. Oh, yes, I definitely love cooking in the Dutch ovens. And I was thinking, since we have to have a balanced meal, we need some fruit. Okay. Yeah. So what are you thinking about? Well, my favorite dessert includes a, a lot of different fruits. It's got, uh, it's called Russian Cherry Delight. It's got apples, cherries, strawberries, and pineapples. Oh, that wow. sounds good. That's a lot Big of Big variety, yeah. Oh, and I also know that uh, Carl has a special thing that he uses for cooking that I haven't seen before. You do, Carl? What would that be? Well, I I don't do a lot of special cooking, but uh, well, I know when I was a scoutmaster with a troop, uh, our boys like to, to do uh, some cardboard box cooking, taking a cardboard box and uh, turning that into an oven. And so anything you could bake in an oven, uh, they could bake in a cardboard box. Well, now that sounds really interesting. So, what are you going to bake for us? Well, maybe something simple like uh, uh, baked apples. Okay. That's another fruit. Could be a good dessert, too. Yes. Matter of fact, it's a good snack to have any time. Ah. So we wouldn't even have to have it with dinner. We could save it for for later on that evening. Yeah, because these oh. weeblows, they're always looking for something to eat. <laughs> Most scouts are. Well, uh, I think that gives us a pretty good idea for our, our menu for Saturday night uh, while we're on this camp out, while we're filming some of these den meetings. So uh, I'll leave you two to, to figure out uh, what the menu uh, or what the grocery list will consist of uh, for this menu. And then we'll uh, get that all together and uh, have that for our uh, our weekend when we go uh, shoot some of these uh, den meetings. And don't forget, it, it's got to fit into our budget. Yes, I was just getting ready to say that because, Carl, you know I love to do outdoor cooking. But sometimes we get carried away and we don't stay within our budget, which is very important that we learn to do. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, having a budget and staying within that budget shopping for the best prices for the products that you're and the, and the, the produce uh, the vegetables uh, fruit the meat that you're going to use the other items that you're going to have uh, for that meal and and knowing how much that's going to cost per person so that you have your budget set and you stay within that budget very important yes it is so Bridget you ready to go shopping yes I am Okay. Well, Carl, I think we've got this under control, and I think we'll have a great time. Great. I look forward to it. Right. Okay. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you. What kind of dessert are you fixing there in the Dutch oven? I'm making a Russian cherry delight. We have apple pie filling, strawberry pie filling, crushed pineapples, cherry pie filling. We have a yellow cake mix and lots and lots of cinnamon. All right. And I'm putting my finishing touches on it, making my layer of cherries. Just straight out of the can, huh? Yes. Spread those out a little bit so you get an even layer of them. Yes, that's why I've done with every layer of food I've put in here so far. Okay. Then we sprinkle some cinnamon. I love cinnamon, don't you? Yes. And it's not very strong once the cake is made, which really shocked me. Now 
That's a lot of cinnamon. In every layer. And we spread in our cake mix. I thought you had to mix cake mix up. No. Not for scalp camp, you don't have to. Oh. So we just kind of spread that cake mix out on top. And I have it poured around the sides to make a crust also. Ah. All right, then I forgot my nuts. I'll have to go back up there and get them. I'm going to spread my pats of butter across the top. So you don't really need a knife, just use a spoon handle. <laughs> Whatever you have handy. Now, Bridget, what are you doing over here? We are seasoning our chicken. We are going to be making grilled chicken and grilled vegetables this evening. Oh, all right. We put a little bit of garlic, a little bit of seasoning salt, a few other spices. Okay. Since you've already started this video. Alvin, that's quite a camp grill you've got there. Yes. We love to do some cooking. After mm. being out all day here at camp, doing all of our hiking and everything, we have to make sure we have a good dinner. There you go. So, what? Uh, I see we've got the chicken. Bridget was telling us about the seasoning on the chicken. What else do we have on the grill there? We have some California blend vegetables. All right. So we're going to grill some up, grill up some vegetables to go with our chicken, huh? Yes, we are. All right. Very good. Well, we'll see how this all turns out in a little bit. Hey, Carl. So what part of the cooking are you doing? Well, I'm demonstrating a box oven. So those are three different methods. Uh, what we've shown are three different methods uh, that you can cook a meal uh, or at least part of a meal uh, for the Weebelow's Cast Iron Chef. We have the Dutch oven for the dessert that you're fixing. We've got the grill uh, for the chicken and the vegetables that Alvin's working on over here. And the third uh, option that's given in the uh, Weebelow's handbook is to use a cardboard oven. So what we have here is just a cardboard box lined with aluminum foil and then we have seven briquettes inside of the cardboard box and we've limited that to seven because the combustible temperature of cardboard is 400 degrees and every briquette uh, that you use in a grill or so forth uh, produces 50 degrees of heat. So we have an oven here with uh, that's producing 350 degrees of heat. Now what we're what we're doing here and what we're going to bake in the oven are uh, uh, some apples and we've taken apples and cored them uh, we've loaded them down with uh, some butter and cinnamon sugar wrapped them in aluminum foil and we've placed them on another pan and then you'll notice that I have some little loaf pans uh, inside the oven uh, and they're going to serve as, as a support for my upper cookie sheet I just close the flaps on the box oven and use a little, literally a little duct tape uh, and we'll close that down and now we'll just wait a while for, uh, for the apples to bake. Alright, we're here at camp and we've got Ranger John with us I guess. and he's going to try to help show us, oh he's not going to try, he's going to show us how to start a fire. So, uh, John, I think we've got all the materials over here. We've got we've got some some uh, tinder, and then we've got some kindling, oh boy. and then we've got some fuel. Oh boy! And uh, that was really set up. So let's let's go ahead and get this thing started, oh. so we can show the wee blows how to build a fire. Okay. Well, let's see. What do you figure we should go for? A little teepee. A little teepee sounds nice. Get us a little bit of, let's see, first of all, we need to get ourselves some stuff to set up. Let's go start with a small teepee for now. And we'll get to set ourselves up the base. Put your stuff right there. 
can do it all sorts of different ways. Some people like using four, some people like using three. But you go ahead and set it up and you always want to leave one side more open than the other. That way you got plenty of air. And what you do, you get put you down. Now we we started here with just a little bit of fire starter. Yep. That's what John started with in the bottom here. It's just a little bit of fire starter uh, to kind of help help our uh, uh, tender get started. Now we're going to go ahead and put our tender and kindle. Get that set up. Maybe a little bit more. And don't worry, if you don't have enough, you can always make more. Exactly. Be ready to try and light it. All right. Let's see. Uh, see we got the, there I've we go. I've got a lighter. Or you can use matches. This just happens to be handier. Let's see. Oh. You want to go? Hey, by Jove, I think we got a winner. I think we do too. All right. All right. Now, as our fire starts to, to grow and the flame catches and the kindling starts to burn, then we'll be able to add some of the bigger pieces of, of wood to the fire. And uh, those larger pieces are what we call fuel. So we need tinder, the little bitty stuff, uh, to catch the flame and help start burning. We need the kindling, which is the slightly larger stuff, uh, which is going to help uh, keep our fire uh, started. And then we'll be putting on the fuel or the wood uh, fuel that is going to, uh, that we're going to use for our fire. Well, we're back at the grill with uh, Alvin. Those vegetables look like they're coming along. And the chicken's looking pretty good too. Yeah, Carl. I think it's just about time to eat over here. Is that right? Yeah. Now, chicken's looking good, but let's make sure that we're safe by using the meat thermometer. And what's that going to do, Alvin? We're going to check the internal temperature of the meat. Yes, sir. To make sure we're up to a safe temperature. Oh, so that's going to help tell us whether our meat is cooked all the way through. Yes, it is. So... We're not eating raw food. That's right. <laughs> We've taken our apples out of the out of the box oven, so uh, let's come over here and take a look at them as we open them up. Uh, they sure do smell good. And there we have that baked apple in the butter and sugar cinnamon that was put on it. We're checking our cake to see how it's doing. Ooh, it's bubbling up and looking good. It's almost time to add the marshmallows. All right, it's time to see how our Dutch oven dessert turned out. Oh, it looks good. I think I'll scoop up some. All right, our cake cooked really well.